the flies for this uh, this fishing, this upstream uh, dry fly fishing for sea trout, um, is is not that difficult. Uh, I use uh, mainly two different patterns. Um, uh, one pattern which is very very simple and easy to make. Um, uh, the design is is two two parts foam, uh, then a small strike indicator, and then some legs in in some hot uh, hot color, orange, yellow, green, whatever uh, works very very well. The other is a bit more uh, lifelike or insect like. You can see this one has uh, some eyes and uh, and uh, and uh, and some flesh material for wing uh, to imitate a wing. Um, both of these uh, fly patterns you can click in, in up in the corners on the links there to to go to to the the, the tying videos on how these flies are done. And in the tying videos you can see uh, see where you can get the materials for for these flies. Both of these are very very work very very well and are based on the same principle, which is add as much foam as you can. Use a fairly light hook, um, add some uh, some rubber legs, and you're golden. Okay. Some nice, nice flies, easy to tie, and they work very, very well for trout, trout all over. Den står den her. Jonas har lige kaldt en monster, monster stor fisk på tørflu. Det er helt fantastisk. Det er det spændende reaction pack, det er som det skal være. Jonas, vi skal finde sted, der kan komme ud over landet for dig. Hvis de ser, hvor stort der er, så må de få af. When you're fishing dry fly, um, dry fly in, for sea trout in particular, uh, one of the most important uh, things to remember is, uh, as always, when you're walking along a stream, to keep a low profile so, so your, your shadow is, uh, does not uh, come too much out all over the water. This is something that really, really will spook the fish. So as you can see, I use the stuff I have in my surroundings, like this bush right here, to actually try to cover my profile as much as possible uh, in order for for the trout not to, to see me. And what I do is I cast the foam beetle as close as I can to potential, uh, potential holding grounds for a trout, potential, uh, potential spots where the trout will rest. And then I slowly, slowly retrieve it. So it has this, uh, this kind of uh, small V effect in the, in, in the surface. And then slowly, slowly I move upwards. And as you can see here, uh, it's, it's a large area where there is not much for me to cover behind. So I make my I make my profile even less between casts. I put every single cast where it casts as close to the other bank, or uh, as close to my bank, or or weed, weeds that that kind of move out into the water, uh, deeper parts of uh, of the stream and stuff like that. Uh, places where the fish would uh, would uh, would lie, um, and then basically just just slowly slowly retrieve the fly, and occasionally of course you will get <laughs> these <laughs> these tangles, and then uh, and then uh, basically just uh, take a few more steps, uh, identify the next potential place where uh, where a, a sea trout or a brown trout for that matter would uh, would would lie, cast to that spot, slowly retrieve like this, and then you work your way up. Uh, upstream. It's it's an, a major major advantage to fish fish upstream uh, in these small streams because uh, the trout will have way way will have way way more uh, difficulty in in actually discovering you uh, because because they will be facing well <laughs> the opposite <laughs> the opposite way of you of course. I thought I heard something like this. 
retrieve it. And then, well, basically, that's about wraps it up. Jeg tror, det er tættere. Jamen, det ved jeg ikke. Den er stor, hvor? Jeg er her, hvor? Jeg ved ved vandet her ved det store sving her. Har du et net, der er stort? Sæt med stor! <laughs> den er klart større end den fik i går. Den hugger lige derovre på hjørnet. Jeg tror, den er ved at være træt til nogenlunde. Og se, hvor stor den er, Bo. Ja, hun. Stor, mand. Det så så fedt ud, da den tog. Jeg tror, den er, den er tættere på 70, end den er på 60. Åh, oh, den sidder yderligt. Er du klar? There is another thing when you're fishing small streams and streams uh, uh, of any size, for that matter, and that is uh, one of one of the key elements to success is to to keep your distance from the stream, especially when you're not fishing. Um, let's take this stretch of, uh, of water here. I'm not going to fish this stretch of water. I want to fish some of uh, some of the bends and curves uh, that and 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 uh, and and shallow parts uh, further upstream. But that's that's not an, an excuse to actually spook some of the fish that there are here. There are two reasons for this. First of all, if I spook a big fish here, I don't know if it's gonna if it's gonna swim far upstream and, and potentially spook a lot of, lot of other fish further upstream. But also, I don't know if there's gonna be another fisherman who's gonna come here and fish also. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move as far into this field um, so that there's absolutely no chance whatsoever that uh, that I will spook the fish out in the stream because who knows maybe I'm gonna come back here and fish later on or maybe some other fisherman is gonna come here and try as well so so remember um, one of the most crucial thing about fishing in streams and small small streams in particular is keep the distance to the water while you're not fishing of course you have to be near the water when you're casting but at all other times keep your distance that's very important. Thank you.